Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Factorio. Last time we set up a basic base mining iron, copper and coal and feeding everything into a power plant that fuels itself and a small factory that produces red and green uh, science packs to fuel our research efforts. The enemy has not shown itself, we haven't seen any aliens just yet, but we did do a little bit of uh, preparations in the form of researching weapons, and I figured it would be useful to actually prepare for an eventual assault. So just create uh, created a submachine gun, which is better than a pistol in just about all regards. So I switch it out to use the same ammunition. And let's craft a little bit more of them. And let's build a radar dish that can automatically scan around on the map for us. So it will slowly start uncovering more of the map as time goes on. And all we need for that is to make it and after that to feed it with electricity. Also to have a look. And for now just drain off a little bit of the excess materials produced by the factory and store them in a box. So then that way if any iron plates are not used by any of the factories here so that they actually make it to all the way to the end, then the iron plates will be stored in the box here for safekeeping and then it makes it easier for us to actually pick up iron plates because we're a bit low on them at the moment. So that's just a, a convenience strategy because I see that the belt is not totally fulfilled with iron plates which means our factory is actually just working hard to use all that iron to make the science packs and as you can see there's uh, already a very nice queue with green science packs and also with uh, red ones. Red ones seems to be used slightly more, slightly faster than the green ones. The for the red science packs, it's probably just churning out. Hip. And the green one is currently blocked because I can't actually put out more because there's no space. And it also means that the input materials are starting to stack up. So the part of the factory, the bottom part here, or most of the part here, that perhaps produce the green science packs, it's not actually doing a lot at the moment. It's just these two factories that are working to make the red packs. That's probably because the armor crafting too only needs red science packs. So that's how that goes. And now this is slowly loading the plates. So we have a couple. And yeah, we can now make a radar dish. Put that down here. Yeah. So we can take the radar dish building and put it down. And it will slowly start exploring the map for us. One of the things I realized after yesterday, uh, last uh, the last video, is that we have a furnace here that manually needs to be fed with coal, and we have a bunch of furnaces here that also manually need to be fed with coal, and they all produce the resources that feed into the factory. The factory setup is I already said it last time. It's it's very direct and simple, and it. it works to get something up and running, but we want to optimize it. Oh. Uh, let's see, is there anything we desperately need? Uh, 
let's have a look and work our way towards electric furnaces and for that we need the advanced material processing. Once we got electric furnaces we don't actually need to have furnaces that use coal anymore. Which will be a nice upgrade. Uh, let's see, we just researched better armor, so have a look. Okay, so we have iron armor that needs a bunch of iron plates and we have heavy armor that actually needs a bunch of copper and steel plates. But it's better. So we need some more heavy duty industry to actually feed ourselves with the materials for this because making steel requires a lot of iron. I mean one piece of steel needs ten iron plates as input. So we will need to expand our industry. But it's kind of bunched up up here, even though there's a huge iron field here. The same here. So one of the first things I'm going to focus on for this episode is restructuring how the industry works and probably that means changing the approach here so we only mine the ore and put it on a conveyor belt and then ship the ore towards a centralized location where we can actually put the furnaces down and smelt it all into plates and then from there take the plates and feed them back into the factory and do the same thing for iron and we probably just want to make some space here, clear the forest and make a nice smelting area and spread things out a little bit more because we will need the space and later on for the factory here if we want to tear this a bit apart we need more space as well to put intermediary conveyor belts and things like that but for now let's start with copper because there's a whole bunch of copper reserves so we can actually take some time to mess with this a little so I think we've got all the raw materials we need Let's start chopping down trees up. Oh, actually, make a new pickaxe. Oh, steel pickaxes. We can make them, but we don't have the steel for it just yet. So that's a later project. some work logging all these trees but having the extra space available will be worth it so nice and clean If 
a belt with copper ore is going to come this way. Uh, that's actually... We will need to have an underground belt. Uh, wait, we can actually reuse the belt for the ore. Just to, to uh, take this one off. this, harvest this, and put a belt down. So, okay, the belt this way, then use the underground belt to get it to the other side. And then make a couple more belts. here, we have a furnace, it produces, and then the output goes this way, and then here we can put it back onto the conveyor belt. But to do that we need more iron plates. So we can have another underground belt to pass it back and feed it back in. So that will be something like this, and a couple more belts. Now it feeds back onto the side of the belt. This one is completed. We still have the problem of having to feed it coal. Uh, yet we have a nice line with coal going on the side. So let's actually branch it off and feed some coal onto the this side of the belt. So the arm can just feed both the ore and the coal into the furnace. And for that we can use a splitter. After that, we will need a couple more transport belts. Yeah. So, a splitter. So, the splitter, every single part that comes in, it will be divided on the left lane, right lane, left lane, right lane, left lane, right lane. And if either of the lanes is blocked, it will just skip a turn, so to say, and put it on the other side until they're both blocked. And then the splitter will just wait until either side becomes clear again. So it's a very good way to evenly divide materials between two lanes. Yet, if one of them needs more than the other, it will automatically balance it to accommodate if there is our spare materials. So, now we have coal going here, and everything. And we need a bunch of power poles. So, let's say we make a setup that's going to be identical, then we'll need a lot of overlapping I think we could actually get away with just putting it up every once. Yeah. Like this. And then because of the lack of reach, the other side also. Okay, so, we now actually have a working furnace. And we can easily extend it to cover more if we actually would have the stone for it. So for now also let's fix that problem by just setting up a mine and just feeding it into a chest. So we will have the stone we need when we want it. Closer, put it down, put it on 
box. Furnace, three, four, five, that makes another furnace. So, this way we can just put down a furnace and a furnace, and arrange for some more iron plates. Man, we're hungry for that stuff. We need to expand our mining efforts as well later on. And build a couple more of these babies. And now we have three furnaces working in parallel to make copper plates. And it's easy to imagine how we can just extend this line uh, this way, but also that way to feed more into it. And then so at some point the production capacity is just going to be constrained by how much ore we can actually feed into the pipeline. Which is a very good problem to have. The other side, we only have a single mining drill. We could also build another one for that. And then just have two of them mining in parallel because a single mine has trouble feeding multiple ones of these. As we saw with the iron. It's always good to have extra ore in capacity. it up and uh, we for now we can just put it down like this. Ooh. One thing is of course that they will actually feed into both sides which is convenient to make them come out and they don't block each other. But at some point they should merge onto the same lane. So let's build that safety in. Okay. Advanced materials processing allows for the second one, which gives us the electric furnace. But that requires advanced electronics, so let's build that. And this is the first thing that actually requires the green science specs. Okay. So, if we have a double belt, and if we would just feed it this, let's extend this a little bit so it will go, go on later and then if we have another belt that just feeds in from the side yeah, so this way it will just feed onto this side as well so now we can actually use both lanes and it will always end up on one lane so there's never going to be iron and coal competing for the same lane so we can hook this with this back up see, works brilliantly and at some point the entire belt is going to be full and then they will slow down because currently they are using more electricity than we can supply uh, it looks like we explored a bit more of the map. Let's have a look. Is there anything bright red? I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. So I haven't found any alien bases just yet. There's a bit of oil here. That's the purple. Just like the oil splotches here. This orangish color is the copper. There's some spaces near that. Black is the coal. And this grayish is the iron. So outside of our immediate area there doesn't seem to be a lot more iron, but there is plenty of copper.
So that's that's good. And there's some coal here that also seems to be there. So we've got a decent spot. We'll have a look at it later again when it has explored more because eventually the radar will just uncover I think just about the entire minimap here. Okay, so copper has been streamlined. Let's see if we can do a similar thing for the iron plates. For now, let's just feed the hungry beast. Look at that, it's actually stuck. It. Okay, we already had two of the drills, that's why it went. Okay, still. So, if we would at the mining put the ore, just funnel it down, we could set up a iron processing area here, and then just pipe it back and then reverse the direction of the iron plates flow here, and put our collection box on the end. Yeah, I think that would be nice for now. It will require a lot of the transport belts. Let's see if we can nab some from here. I mean, why make them ourselves when we have a factory for that? So, 50 here, another two there. We got a decent start. And also grab a couple of the inserters to make life easy. Okay, for now we'll just leave this up and running because iron is our limiting factor. So let's just grab a stack of stone to make some new furnaces. And we also limit how much we can take out because we don't need that much. It's just this is crazy amounts. Okay. Let's just take one full stack. That's ten furnaces if we need them. Let's also go for uh, let's go for four right now. That we would increase our production capacity by one. Okay. So if you wanna get the iron out that way, let's uh start with but at the end. So we do it that way. Then we would have a belt feeding into it, two spaces for the furnace, input, and then a belt leading down. Furnace down. everything right now. Inputs, outputs. Then we can do a similar branch for the coal here. Branch it off, feed it in that way. Uh, yep. So, uh, that way. Oh, get closer. Split it, feed it off to the top side, and then reverse. Okay, advanced electronics, that was a requirement before we could get the advanced material processing. Put that one in. Okay, so copper goes in and out, feeds into this. So that's nice. And we could even extend it a little bit all the way up to there. And then in the end hook up the coal supply again to the main line here. But for now we don't have to bother. And then we're out of rails. Built another 
then hook it up. Uh, we need a whole lot more to actually get the ore down here. Um, we take this one out for now. We can just move this a little bit and start mining ore at the bottom. Uh, I can actually put it down there. Just to minimize this a little bit. Uh, and also if we do it like this, only put the, or, uh, the coal on one side and we can actually have the ore come out on the other side. And what if we make this into a, a combiner like that side pretty well. Got some power poles up and running. So that's one, that's two. So this is going to be happily mining, feeding into this. This means we can do it this way. For now empty this one plant a bit. And let's have the part of the factory that works on green science packs be fed by one part. So this is nicely divided. Ah, whatever. Just okay. This is the new thing. Managed to uproot and move the iron ore production industry without it actually going down too much. Fifth furnace. May as well expand the other direction. Mines. I mean, this one doesn't have a lot of reserves. This one has more, but this is really sweet, 10,000. But it will uh, do for now. The increase in furnace activity will require more coal. So let's build another mining drill for this one as well. And start feeding it. That means we probably want to use both sides of the of the conveyor belt for that. So let's make this into a, a 
a smarter merging system as well, so we are guaranteed to not get materials on both sides of the line. Now we can just start from this side. the factory would be running at maximum capacity then half of the coal would funnel this way the other half would go on then half of that half is going towards the copper production so that's basically one quarter of the coal and another the remaining quarter would funnel all the way up towards the power plant but usually coal is not a limiting factor, uh, in fact it's, there's usually coal in excess, so it's not that much of an issue. Copper, especially at first, is not that demanding either, so this will quiet down as well, but not be too bad in the demands, and iron is just a hungry beast that's always wants more. Okay, so the end result of this factory is still the same as at the start of this episode. We're still producing red and green science packs and power, but how it is pr being produced has been streamlined a lot. And I think that's a good point to end this episode effort to keep the episodes a little shorter and sweeter than the first one. So, thank you for watching, and see you next time.